FedEx just came in and dropped all the boxes that you see here. Those. All those boxes are coming from one customer. The customer did not mail one, five, 10, or 12. He mailed 19, 40, 90 video cards that came in for repair. 19, 40, 90 video cards. Big Boss already started opening some of them. He opened four boxes. We're going to go over them. And in this video, we're going to open the rest of the boxes. Maybe we can do a process of elimination on what we're going to be working on and what we're not going to be working on. So without wasting any time, let's start with this one here that Big Boss opened. And we'll just go over them one by one. And we'll take it from there. Right off the bat, looking at this one, it's going to be deemed a no fix right off the bat. Why? Because <laughs> it's cracked. See it? That's what? A 12 to 15 layer board? A crack like this? We're done. So board number one or video card number one is going to be deemed a no fix. The connector is good. I do not see any burn marks or any melting happening on the connector. That's one nasty crack. We're done. Next. Let's go over this one. That big bus also opened. And the customer said various issues. So different issues. But this one here, I checked on the connector. It looks good. And same problem. Card number two, we're done. It's a no fix. I do not know where the customer got all those video cards from. Maybe he bought them off eBay and thought, let me send them over to Northridge Fix and I'll get rich. But things do not work out that way. We have another one here and I need to make some room so I can lay all the boxes. Now, if we look at the connector, it looks clean. I do not see any burn marks, nothing melting. I do not see anything wrong on this one. Maybe we should go under the microscope. I don't know. Does this look cracked? Any cracking on the board? is neither practical nor economical to fix. So if we see a crack on the board, this is what, a 12, 15 layer board? A crack on the board requires a lot of work to fix the traces, the broken traces in between layers of the board. It's not a practical repair. Can it be done? Yes, of course. But it's not practical, it's not economical, and there's no guarantee that this problem is not gonna happen again after repair. The reason this breaks is because of how heavy that card is. People install it without support. So this one here, it's very likely that we have a crack. But we'll put it on the side. And we have this one here. That big bus also opened, so he opened four cards. And I told him, do not open the rest. I'll do it on camera. We're going to check the 12 VHPWR connector. The connector is right there. I do not see any cracks. Right? Yeah, this one looks clean. And we'll take a look at this card. Box comes packaged like this. And the customer, the customer is a nice guy. He has a label on every video card so that we know what's going on with the card. It says damaged. Now we know everything about the card. What does damage means? The connector looks good. I do not see any burn marks on the connector. 
I do not see any cracks on the slot, but we're gonna have to open it to see what's going on and where the damage is coming from. So this one, we're gonna put it on the side as a video card that we're gonna look into. Grab another one. So this video is gonna be about opening all the boxes to see what's inside them. And then we can tackle the repairs in future videos. This one is an Asus. And the note reads, damage. And if we look at the slot, what do we see? We see a nice, tiny little crack. You see it? Nice one. Not too in your face. Nice, smooth, and gentle. So this one we're gonna deem a no fix. And no fixes are going on the right. The fixes are going on the left. Those video cards are cracking more than crackheads. Let's see what we have here. This one is an Asus as well. And the note reads, damage. The connector looks good. And we have a crack. <laughs> what the... This one is going to be deemed a no fix. How are those boards breaking? We have what? One, two, three, four, five. Five video cards so far with a cracked board. The video card is heavy. And a lot of users, they install the video card like this on their motherboard without any support. What ends up happening is the video card sags and it causes the board to break. Or maybe somebody bought a custom built PC online and the person who sold the custom built PC, they pre installed the video card and they shipped it with. UPS or FedEx. You know how UPS and FedEx are like. They play soccer with your packages. And the box suffered a lot of impact and the video card cracked. If you have any idea how else the board can break, let me know. Leave it down in the comments. Let's grab this box. It looks like we're going to have a lot of broken boards. And again, packaging is good. Boxes are new. And the customer probably spent a lot of money to ship those over. Asus, damage. The connector is good. And, and we have a crack as well. So it's safe to say that Asus video cards for the 90s are cracking. Because most of them, or all of them, are Asus. Right? Look at the crack. It's extending all the way. Look at my tweezer. Before I look at the card, I need to look at my tweezer. Look at this. Look at how deep that crack is. All the way in. And here. Let me dim the light a bit. And this one is going to be deemed in no fix as well. If we look at it from the back, can we see the crack? And yes, we can. Because that board is cracked front to back. How many do we still have? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven 10, 11. 11 more boxes. I have a feeling that all those cards are going to have a crack on them. This one is a Gigabyte. And look at this, Gigabyte already has a sticker on the board. It looks like the customer mailed over the card to Gigabyte and they put the sticker on the board. Pointing possibly to a crack. Do we have a crack here? I see a sticker from Gigabyte on back of the board. But is this a crack? And I think this is not a case of a crack, right? I do not see cracking anywhere. Let's see what the sticker is all about on back of the board. 
and Gigabyte, they have those fancy red stickers. And I do see missing components here. Okay, so a sign of relief, right? And we may have a missing component here. We're going to have to open up the card, take out the board, and we're going to inspect this whole area and see what components are missing. Those are fixable. But I do not see any cracking. So that's good. And it says, it doesn't say damage here. It says video. All right, so there's a difference between video and damage. Big difference. This one is an Asus. I do not see any issues with the connector. And if we take a look, do we have any cracks? And we do, we do. Wow, the crack on this one is major. So what is the difference between a note that reads damage and a note that reads video? What's the difference? I'd like to know. Look at what we have here. We have a crack and drift lines from the surface. But of course, anytime you have a crack on a board, you have underlying issues between layers of the board. The customer is probably watching the video and he's going like this. What have I gotten myself into? I spent a lot of money on those cards. I spent a lot of money on shipping. I spent a lot of money and time on packaging. And this guy, Alex, is killing me. And this one is a gigabyte. So it looks like we have a combination of gigabytes and ASUS cards. <laughs> and the board is broken as well. Yeah, we do see a dent in that board right here. Damage, and please note, the word damage is different than the word video. Makes a difference how you read it. And we do have damage on the board. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I do not know why I'm even wasting time, end of the day opening all those packages, but the customer is paying for bench fee and he's paying for return shipping. But do you think we're gonna spend time opening all those boxes and then repackaging all those boxes for free? Of course not. If you have a cracked video card, do not send it over. This one is a gigabyte. The connector looks good. And the note reads damage. And we do have a dent on the board. And this one reads video. It doesn't read damage. Yeah, this one we have a dent. A dent is very likely underlying issues within layers of the board. Do we have any stickers from Gigabyte? We do not. This one reads damage. It's gonna take a lot of time to repackage all those cards and send them back to the customer. Let's see, oh yeah, we have damage You see, look at the damage here. And that's because of the crack, of the crack that you see right here. And the crack is going front to back. If we flip the card, 
and we look here see we have an asus and the note reads video So far, so good, right? Okay, so we do not see any cracks on this one. Let's flip the board or the video card. Look on the back. And the card is cracked right here. The note reads damage, and the board is cracked. Wow. I'm just curious where that customer bought all those cards from. Maybe those cards were being sold on eBay, easy fix, buy them, fix them, and sell them, make money. I don't know. Who would buy cracked boards? It's like buying cracked glass. Why? Are you going to fix it? I don't know. Maybe I'm being too hard on the customer. Uh, I do not have any more room. The connector looks good. Usually when I see a 4090, it's a burnt connector, but today <laughs> is the cracked board day. Asus, Asus. If Asus is watching, they're probably going crazy. And this one reads damage. The card is also cracked. Okay, so we did all the boxes. We have three or four cards to work on. Hopefully we can fix at least one of those cards. But otherwise all the cracked ones, the broken ones, are gonna be deemed a no fix. The customer is still responsible for a bench fee and the reason we charge a bench fee is so people do not mail junk over to our shop. If we're going to be working on junk every single day, then why have this business? Just close and go home. Nineteen boxes. Most of them are ASUS and Gigabyte with a cracked board. What's cracking those boards? Should we blame it on the user? Should we blame it on the manufacturer, on the designer, on the materials used? I mean, when you design such a heavy card, the least you can do by default is to provide some type of support so that card does not sag and break the board. A normal user would plug in the card horizontally, maybe without adding any support, the card would sag and break. Should we blame it on the user? or on the manufacturer, designer, or materials used? I don't know. 50-50 maybe, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.